A bipolar junction transistor is a type of transistor that uses both electron and hole charge carriers. In contrast, unipolar transistors, such as field effect transistors, only use one kind of charge carrier. For their operation, BJTs use two junctions between two semiconductor types, N-type and P-type. BJTs are manufactured in two types, NPN and PNP, and are available as individual components, or fabricated in integrated circuits, often in large numbers. The basic function of a BJT is to amplify current. This allows BJTs to be used as amplifiers or switches, giving them wide applicability in electronic equipment, including computers, televisions, mobile phones, audio amplifiers, industrial control, and radio transmitters. Note on current direction. By convention the direction of current on diagrams is shown as the direction that a positive charge would move. This is called conventional current. However, current in metal conductors is due to the flow of electrons which, because they carry a negative charge, move in the opposite direction to conventional current. On the other hand, inside a bipolar transistor, currents can be composed of both positively charged holes and negatively charged electrons. In this article, current arrows are shown in the conventional direction, but labels for the movement of holes and electrons show their actual direction inside the transistor. Function BJTs come in two types, or polarities, known as PNP and NPN based on the doping types of the three main terminal regions. An NPN transistor comprises two semiconductor junctions that share a thin P-doped anode region, and a PNP transistor comprises two semiconductor junctions that share a thin N-doped cathode region. Charge flow in a BJT is due to diffusion of charge carriers across a junction between two regions of different charge concentrations. The regions of a BJT are called emitter, collector, and base. A discrete transistor has three leads for connection to these regions. Typically, the emitter region is heavily doped compared to the other two layers, whereas the majority charge carrier concentrations in base and collector layers are about the same. By design, most of the BJT collector current is due to the flow of charges injected from a high concentration emitter into the base where there are minority carriers that diffuse toward the collector, and so BJTs are classified as minority carrier devices. In typical operation, the base emitter junction is forward biased, which means that the P-doped side of the junction is at a more positive potential than the N-doped side, and the base collector junction is reverse biased. In an NPN transistor, when positive bias is applied to the base emitter junction, the equilibrium is disturbed between the thermally generated carriers and the repaking electric field of the N-doped emitter depletion region. This allows thermally excited electrons to inject from the emitter into the base region. These electrons diffuse through the base from the region of high concentration near the emitter towards the region of low concentration near the collector. The electrons in the base are called minority carriers because the base is doped P-type, which makes holes the majority carrier in the base. To minimize the percentage of carriers that recombine before reaching the collector base junction, the transistor's base region must be thin enough that carriers can diffuse across it in much less time than the semiconductor's minority carrier lifetime. In particular, the thickness of the base must be much less than the diffusion length of the electrons. The collector base junction is reverse biased, and so little electron injection occurs from the collector to the base. But electrons that diffuse through the base towards the collector are swept into the collector by the electric field in the depletion region of the collector base junction. The thin shared base and asymmetric collector emitter doping are what differentiates a bipolar transistor from two separate and oppositely biased diodes connected in series. Voltage, current, and charge control the collector emitter current can be viewed as being controlled by the base emitter current. 
or by the base emitter voltage. These views are related by the current voltage relation of the base emitter junction, which is just the usual exponential current voltage curve of APN junction. The physical explanation for collector current is the concentration of minority carriers in the base region. Due to low-level injection the ambipolar transport rates is in effect determined by the excess minority carriers. Detailed transistor models of transistor action, such as the gummel poon model, account for the distribution of this charge explicitly to explain transistor behavior more exactly. The charge control view easily handles phototransistors, where minority carriers in the base region are created by the absorption of photons and handles the dynamics of turn-off or recovery time, which depends on charge in the base region recombining. However, because base charge is not a signal that is visible at the terminals, the current and voltage control views are generally used in circuit design and analysis. In analog circuit design, the current control view is sometimes used because it is approximately linear. That is, the collector current is approximately times the base current. Some basic circuits can be designed by assuming that the emitter base voltage is approximately constant, and that collector current is beta times the base current. However, to accurately and reliably design production BJT circuits, the voltage control model is required. The voltage control model requires an exponential function to be taken into account. But when it is linearized such that the transistor can be modeled as a transconductance, as in the ebers mol model, design for circuits such as differential amplifiers again becomes a mostly linear problem, so the voltage control view is often preferred. For translinear circuits, in which the exponential IV curve is key to the operation, the transistors are usually modeled as voltage controlled with transconductance proportional to collector current. In general, transmitter level circuit design is performed using SPICE or a comparable analog circuit simulator, so model complexity is usually not of much concern to the designer. Turn on, turn off, and storage delay The bipolar transistor exhibits a few delay characteristics when turning on and off. Most transistors, and especially power transistors, exhibit long base storage times that limit maximum frequency of operation in switching applications. One method for reducing this storage time is by using a Baker clamp. Transistor parameters, alpha and beta the proportion of electrons able to cross the base and reach the collector is a measure of the BJT efficiency. The heavy doping of the emitter region and light doping of the base region causes many more electrons to be injected from the emitter into the base then holds to be injected from the base into the emitter. The common emitter current gain is represented by beta F or the H parameter HFE. It is approximately the ratio of the DC collector current to the DC base. Current in forward active region. It is typically greater than 50 for small signal transistors but can be smaller in transistors designed for high power applications. Another important parameter is the common base current gain, alpha F. The common base current gain is approximately the gain of current from emitter to collector in the forward active region. This ratio usually has a value close to unity, between 0.98 and 0.998. It is less than unity due to recombination of charge carriers as they cross the base region. Alpha and beta are more precisely related by the following identities. Structure. A BJT consists of three differently doped semiconductor regions. The emitter region, the base region and the collector region. These regions are, respectively, P-type, N-type and P-type in a PNP transistor, and N-type, P-type and N-type in an NPN transistor. Each semiconductor region is connected to a terminal, appropriately labeled, emitter, base and collector. The base is physically located between the emitter and the collector and is made from lightly doped, high resistivity material. The collector surrounds the emitter region, making it almost impossible for the electrons injected into the base region to escape without being collected. 
thus making the resulting value of alpha very close to unity, and so, giving the transistor a large beta. A cross-section view of a BJT indicates that the collector base junction has a much larger area than the emitter base junction. The bipolar junction transistor, unlike other transistors, is usually not a symmetrical device. This means that interchanging the collector and the emitter makes the transistor leave the forward active mode and start to operate in reverse mode. Because the transistor's internal structure is usually optimized for forward mode operation, interchanging the collector and the emitter makes the values of alpha and beta in reverse operation much smaller than those in forward operation. Often the alpha of the reverse mode is lower than 0.5. The lack of symmetry is primarily due to the doping ratios of the emitter and the collector. The emitter is heavily doped while the collector is lightly doped allowing a large reverse bias voltage to be applied before the collector base junction breaks down. The collector base junction is reverse biased in normal operation. The reason the emitter is heavily doped is to increase the emitter injection efficiency. The ratio of carriers injected by the emitter to those injected by the base. For high current gain, most of the carriers injected into the emitter base junction must come from the emitter. The low performance lateral bipolar transistors sometimes used in CMOS processes are sometimes designed symmetrically, that is, with no difference between forward and backward operation. Small changes in the voltage applied across the base emitter terminals causes the current that flows between the emitter and the collector to change significantly. This effect can be used to amplify the input voltage or current. BJTs can be thought of as voltage-controlled current sources, but are more simply characterized as current-controlled current sources, or current amplifiers, due to the low impedance at the base. Early transistors were made from germanium but most modern BJTs are made from silicon. A significant minority are also now made from gallium arsenide, especially for very high-speed applications. NPN NPN is one of the two types of bipolar transistors, consisting of a layer of P-doped semiconductor between two N-doped layers. A small current entering the base is amplified to produce a large collector and emitter current. That is, when there is a positive potential difference measured from the emitter of an NPN transistor to its base as well as positive potential difference measured from the base to the collector, the transistor becomes active. In this on state, current flows between the collector and emitter of the transistor. Most of the current is carried by electrons moving from emitter to collector as minority carriers in the P-type base region. To allow for greater current and faster operation, most bipolar transistors used today are NPN because electron mobility is higher than hole mobility. A mnemonic device for the NPN transistor symbol is not pointing in, based on the arrows in the symbol and the letters in the name. PNP The other type of BJT is the PNP, consisting of a layer of N-doped semiconductor between two layers of P-doped material. A small current leaving the base is amplified in the collector output. That is, a PNP transistor is on when its base is pulled low relative to the emitter. In a PNP transistor, emitter base region is forward biased, so electric field and carriers will be generated. They should flow towards the base junction, but the base part is very thin and has low conductivity. The reverse biased collector base part has generated holes. So due to the electric field, carriers or electrons get pulled by the holes. The arrows in the NPN and PNP transistor symbols are on the emitter legs and point in the direction of the conventional current flow when the device is in forward active mode. A mnemonic device for the PNP transistor symbol is pointing in, based on the arrows in the symbol and the letters in the name. Heterojunction bipolar transistor The heterojunction bipolar transistor is an improvement of the BJT that can handle signals of very high frequencies, up to several hundred GHz. It is common in modern ultra-fast circuits, mostly RF systems. Heterojunction transistors have different semiconductors for the elements of the transistor. 
Usually the emitter is composed of a larger band gate material than the base. The figure shows that this difference in band gape allows the barrier for holes to inject backward from the base into the emitter, denoted in the figure as delta phi p, to be made large, while the barrier for electrons to inject into the base delta phi n is made low. This barrier arrangement helps reduce minority carrier injection from the base when the emitter base junction is under forward bias and thus reduces base current and increases emitter injection efficiency. The improved injection of carriers into the base allows the base to have a higher doping level, resulting in lower resistance to access the base electrode. In the more traditional BJT, also referred to as homojunction BJT, the efficiency of carrier injection from the emitter to the base is primarily determined by the doping ratio between the emitter and base which means the base must be lightly doped to obtain high injection efficiency, making its resistance relatively high. In addition, higher doping in the base can improve figures of merit like the early voltage by lessening base narrowing. The grading of composition in the base, for example, by progressively increasing the amount of germanium in a SIGE transistor, causes a gradient in band gap in the neutral base, denoted in the figure by delta phi g, providing a built-in field that assists electron transport across the base. That drift component of transport aids the normal diffusive transport, increasing the frequency response of the transistor by shortening the transit time across the base. Two commonly used HBTs are silicon germanium and aluminum gallium arsenide. Though a wide variety of semiconductors may be used for the HBT structure, HBT structures are usually grown by epitaxy techniques like MOCVD and MBE.